control, the capability was degraded. The handling qualities were not the same. But thankfully, uh, we had uh, practiced and we had gotten certified for manual control. And so we took over manual control for over an hour mm -hmm. on the V-bar, the axis where we actually rendezvous with the space station. And for over an hour while the, the teams on the ground did their troubleshooting, and we got a couple of jets back. And then from that point on, you could tell that the thrust was degraded. At the time, we didn't know why. Obviously, uh, that, that, since the failures had just happened, you could tell it was degraded. But it was still impressive. Uh, let me give you an example. Coming into docking, those final 10 meters, um, we have a tolerance when we actually connect with the space station of 5 degrees in attitude and about 4 inches in position. And so Starliner came right down in automatic mode at this point and right down the middle, even with the degraded thrusters, which was truly impressive, knowing what we know now and not knowing what we know, and not knowing in the, them, with what degraded we know thrusters, now, the capability the was the there to actually dock that precise. Uh, and then, of course, we became Expedition 71 crew members. Uh, uh, we're fully certified for all aspects of life aboard the space station here, whether it's spacewalks or operating over orbit arm or maintenance. Uh, which we've done a lot of. Uh, that's part of living here. You have to keep the space station going. Uh, that's part and of uh, here, over to Sunny for some of those details. Going. And uh, over to Sunny for some of those details. Yeah, thanks, Butch. Uh, I'll just add a couple other things yeah, thanks, once Butch. that uh, we did once we got onto the space station. We still had a lot of checks for Starliner, and those we all went really well. One of them was um, practicing really for well. a safe haven to make sure that we had all the emergency equipment that's laid out that we need to have to get into our spacecraft and use it as a safe haven in case something happens to the International Space Station. Expedition 71, 71 plus as we call it, and we've been doing science for them, uh, maintenance, some major maintenance that um, uh, has been waiting for a little while, like stuff that's that, been um, on the books for a little bit. Little there's like the a a urine processor pump that we um, a took a one good pump out and put into a good body, and it's called Franken pump. That's ready to go in case we have any problems with the urine processing system. Butch and I just did a moderate temperature loop, low temperature loop cooling refill for all the all the US OS modules. Uh, uh, I got to do some gene sequencing. I think you got to do some other science experiments as well um, with a moon microscope uh, that was 3D printed. So we've been thoroughly busy up here, integrated right into the crew. And uh, every every about once a week, we get to jump into Starliner and talk to our control team there and work through all uh, the new nuances that are that they're working, that they're working very hard on the ground to make sure that we uh, will be able to come home before too long. Home Over to you, Chelsea. That sounds great. Thanks, Butch and Sunny. Uh, let's jump into some questions. That We're going uh, to start with Bill Harwood with CBS News. We're going to start with Bill Harwood with CBS News. Butch, given what you just what you just told us in your remarks, um, based on what you know today, how confident are you that the Starliner will get you home safely, given the known helium leaks and the earlier thruster issues? And as test pilots, are you satisfied you have a workable backup procedures in place if the normal deorbit plan cannot be executed for some reason? Thanks. Cannot be executed for some reason. Thanks. Yeah, yeah, thank you. For, that's a good question, Bill, obviously. Um, yeah, yes, thank you for, I'll say yes question, to all of those obviously. questions. Um, we're yes, absolutely confident. Yes we've already, already Sunny mentioned for safe haven. We had that test, not just the, the, the test, but also to, to do it for real. When we had that possible conjunction a few weeks ago. Yeah, one other thing that during the burn itself, once we get to the burn, we're pretty much home free. As long as the OMAX continue to operate, there's no reason they wouldn't. Because the OMAX can maintain the attitude themselves during the burn. So that's another added feature that is in our in our favor. So that's another added feature that is in our. We'll now go to Gina Sinceri with ABC News. We'll now go to Gina Sinceri with ABC News. What did this hurricane look like from the space station, and how are your homes doing down here? Is everyone okay? Lost power? Tell me about that. Lost power? Tell me about that. 
Yes, the a hurricane is quite impressive. Yes, and I don't think many people know this, but I, I actually took a picture of a storm that was off the west coast of Africa about a week and a half before the hurricane impacted. And I'm about 98% sure that that was the, the one that became barrel. Uh, four days later, it was hurricane strength. I took some video of it, set it down. I don't know if the Weather Channel showed it or not, but uh, showed it. And uh, it was, like I said, very impressive. We got some a couple of days later. And uh, as, as, as it was very fortunate, the hurricane did. Did uh, slow down in its intensity, as you know, and I think all of our families doing well. We've got down trees like most people. Thankful we've got good church folks and good neighbors that are coming by and helping us out clean up.